the actual halfway point of this race will of the season will bring us to Daytona International Speedway today for running the Coke Zero Sugar 400 at Daytona. Last week at Chicagoland, Clint Boyer won in a last second choke job off of turn four. As we go to Daytona, 40 cars, one pack always brings apart. About the fear of the big one. When you get 40 cars, one pack, one slight move, you crash 15 or 20 of them. Well, Ricky Stenhouse is in the field, so he'll probably cause at least one. After that one. Huh. All righty. The summer Daytona race is considered by many to be the biggest, one of the Grand Slam races on the NASCAR schedule. With the Daytona 500, Coke 600, Brickyard 400, and the Southern 500, the latter two coming up in the playoff push, being the final two races of the regular season. Here at Daytona, it's not like there's a set groove that everybody's going to run, but the best line is whoever's the fastest lot, fastest train. So if the best, best line of cars is in the middle, well, you put your car in the middle. Fastest train's on the outside, put your car on the outside. If the fastest way around's on the bottom, you know the rest. Coming to the green flag, do not even think about touching the brakes the entire way around. You want to keep this car... About 196, 5, 196. You can kind of see the car trying to top out. And then you want to keep that car down on the bottom. Again, usually the bottom's fast way around when it's just you. However, you will, in a pack of 40, you will need to block a lot, especially if you want to win this race. However, blocking can is a big concern among Quite a few, especially if you're Brad Keselowski. With the cars blocking left and right, making some pretty sketchy moves. One mistimed block or too hard of a push can wreck a whole lot of cars. And I mean a whole lot of them. Currently going down the back stretch. A nice view of the rainbow car that we will use probably a few more times. Probably be using it for Talladega as well. Talladega, obviously the Darlington throwback race. And probably Bristol. And we're gonna start second for this race next to Kurt Busch with Jimmy Johnson in fourth. I don't even know which win Jimmy Johnson got, but he apparently won a race. Sure, let's go with that. Let's go racing under the lights at Daytona. 
welcome to the starting lineup, as you see coming by on the screen. So Eric Alvarola will be going for the back of this field today. AJ Almanair will be starting in the back due to an unapproved body modification. However, it doesn't matter where or where how you start at, the, at these races. It's how you finish. We're underway at Daytona. You can kind of see how much the outside lane is a detriment with this package is we just lost four spots on the outset and they're already single file. We're going to trap Joey Logano on the on the high side of the, or at least try to with Bubba Wallace getting possibly pushed to the point by Keselowski in the two. We're going to try to shoot straight to the outside with a wicked slingshot from the 11 to Denny Hamlin, maybe push the 41. As we're coming around off of two, Bubba Wallace became the highest finishing African American driver in the Daytona five, sorry, highest finish, finishing black driver in the Daytona 500 in 2018, finishing second, getting Realizing that drafting help is quite important as we just shove Keselowski to the front. He is the 2016 winner of this race. It's kind of hard to see if you can tandem, which is where two cars link to, can link together and go a lot faster than the other 38. But we're going to try it as you see we're I'm currently trying to stay locked to the back of that two car. I tried a similar strategy in the Daytona 500 race with Stenhouse. And for the most part, it worked. White flag is out in stage one, and you see what I mean about tandeming? Look at the gap I just put on Bubba Wallace just by pushing Keselowski. And letting off every so often because the problem that's the problem with the way those noses are slanted. You can't really push and lock on push hard for a long time. Otherwise, with those Camaros, otherwise you're going to wreck a bunch of cars. Wreck the guy you're pushing. As we come off at of turn four. And that will be it for stage one. Keselowski. The ISM winner will get the stage points. Here you see the top 10 on the left side of your screen. Getting ready for the start of stage two, folks. Brad Keselowski on the inside. William Byron on the outside. We are underway here in stage two. Trying to side draft, maybe try to keep even with Keselowski, but here comes Denny Hamlin all the way up the middle already, getting a push from the 48 of Johnson. Three wide. Now Hamlin leaves us in the middle. Pinball. That almost was big. Another four lap stage.
We're going to try to push the 43 of Daryl Wallace. Because there's already a three-car breakaway at the front. And whoa, it was almost big. And back in line, lost a lot of spots after that big moment in the trial. As we're racing around off two, let's go on board the 24. Look at that, 200 miles an hour pushing Kyle Busch into three as Kurt Busch kind of made a dangerous block. Off of turn four. Going into three, I'm sorry. And by dangerous, I mean, wow, he almost wrecked us all. As with that, we just slingshot around Kurt Busch. Can we try to get around Hamlin? Gonna have to get in line before maybe. Oh, oh, Bush, there he goes. Way to the inside. We're still green. Still racing here at Daytona. Final lap in stage number two coming up. White flag is out. Final lap in stage two. Two Hendrick teammates, two Gibbs teammates, and uh, Ford and a Chevy make up the top six as it is a six-car breakaway at the front of the pack. Try to see if we can pull a draft from the two. And we will. Stage one winner. We're going to try to go for it. To the outside. There goes Byron. He's got Bubba Wallace. Holds the block. Gives up the outside lane. And we win stage two. By that much. Don't know how. I guess he didn't want to risk it for stage three. I don't know. Anyways, here's the start of stage three, usually where things start going out the window. Green flag back into the air. Denny Hamlin already gave me the back bumper of that 43 trying to push him. We're going to try to side draft. And so far, we're kind of all alone on the bottom lane. You just see the two Keselowski. Could he get to our back bumper? As so far, looks like the outside lane seems to be the lane to be. As Jimmy Johnson trying to take third. Or third, he's stuck behind in second. Denny Hamlin goes to the bottom. I really don't know why Bubba Wallace didn't hold his line coming off that final stage. You know, going to the line. I honestly would have held it. Maybe got yourself some pretty useful playoff points. Oh, Hamlin spinning. And somehow they have didn't wreck. How did they not wreck? Hamlin slid into traffic. Everybody checked up. And they're still green. We've only had two cautions the entire night just for two stage ends. Okay, we'll take that. 
Trying to go to the outside of the 43. Oh, boy. Oh, Bubba spins into the pack. Down he goes. And I think he just got stuck on the curb. Still green somehow. That would have been two cautions already because of that. Kyle Busch even has a couple wins here and his great campaign in 2008 that didn't lead to a championship. He's already got a couple wins here at Daytona. He won the 2012 shootout with a pass on Tony Stewart. And he won the 2008 race when under yellow when there was a wreck on the last lap. Back when there was one during my checker time. So far it is Bush, Byron, Keselowski, Blaney, and Johnson, the top five. Bubba Wallace was stuck on the between the apron and the track, didn't flip, and somehow we're still green. Trying to see if we can get a draft under the twenty under the eighteen. Probably have to go down to maybe pick up a run from the two Keselowski. In the car right, semi close to the bottom, coming off the two down the back stretch. Two cars breaking away from the front of the field. And the caution has finally come out for something. With late in this one, five laps left. So this could be interesting for pit strategy. As here is Kyle Busch trying to lead the field around for the restart. Three laps to go at Daytona. How does it turn out? Got a couple, got two Fords in the top four. Keselowski knows how to win at these tracks and try to jump right down in front of Keselowski. Of him. Here we go. Bush with the, he's getting quite a bit of a lead. Question is, will Joey Logano run him down? Off of four, we still haven't had the big one yet. We're going to see the white flag here at Daytona, sponsored by Credit One Bank. Bush getting sideways. Oh, there it is. Maybe. Johnson saves it. There's a big cluster behind as everybody slows up. And Dylan spins. And he's in traffic. Still green. They're still racing at Daytona. In the three for the final time. Oh, Menard spins. Stuck on the apron. And out of turn four, Brad Keselowski has just won the Coke Zero 400 at Daytona. You see the players on the top of the screen. Bush led the most laps. Daniel Suarez ended up seventh.
And Daryl Wallace ended up 34th. As you see the Next race being at Kentucky for the Quaker State 400. We'll be going to the universe car first car.